Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now, in the last episode, we set up the foundations for the city of Blackwater. Inspired by English and Irish-style cities, we've gone with left-hand drive and a bunch of roundabouts to get us started on the right foot. We've also set up two major estates, one made up of tightly packed row housing, and another as a more traditional open-plan suburban development. Alongside this is our commercial industry with a smattering of services and parks, such as the medical clinic, a crematorium, and a small area for apartment blocks. As we push out further, we come across more city services, the police and fire station, and then we're met with a large industrial sector, at least large relative to the town. And finally, we've added another sort of service point for depots, such as the park and road maintenance buildings, and the water service. Today, the plan is to expand our education system by developing a new high school and its surrounding amenities, set up the early stages of public transport with buses and taxis, and begin development of our specialized industries for farming, forestry, and mining. In order to action this new expansion, we're going to be commissioning the building of a new interchange and highway bypass, which I've got a nice time lapse here at the beginning to kick us off with. But before that, remember, if you enjoy these videos, please do consider subscribing. We are ever close to hitting that 100k number and my ultimate validation. <laughs> as well as that, if you can spare the time, maybe drop a little like on the video and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below. Let's begin. All right, so as we kick off the time lapse, there is no time for pleasantries. This episode is long enough as it is. I have this nasty habit of going way over the time limit I sort of set myself, and it's kind of difficult to predict with some of the time lapses that are in there, but I'm just having so darn much fun. I don't really notice the time go by. So what we're doing, we've just purchased a bunch of map tiles using all 18 of the expansion permits we had, spent two development points on highways themselves, and I'm building an outer bypass for the highway, uh, kind of an interchange, for this highway to go around our town, so to give people an option to go around it rather than through it. And the reason for that is because the gap between this part of the highway here and the town itself, there is a huge abundance of all these different types of resources, forestry, ore deposits, and fertile land. And we want to make use of that. So we'll be starting to build out some of that industry today, and I just thought, why not lay the groundwork early for a highway to allow trucks to get onto it and export their goods off the map without going through the town and bothering us. Might be a little bit early to be doing that, but I'm still happy with the results, and we'll definitely be making use of it either in episode 3 or 4 as we get a bit further into the game. So I decided to build just a, a fairly basic interchange, but I just wanted to do it myself just try to create something myself without looking at anything and it's fairly basic but i'm actually really happy with how it turned out and it's allowing me to get much better at the tools in the game I'm definitely improving i feel it every episode i'm figuring out like the snapping things i'm understanding things are clicking you're getting that like aha moment basically over and over where you're like oh yeah this makes sense i get it now so I'm really happy with how it's turned out, even though it is fairly basic and it's going nowhere <laughs> for this entire episode. But I thought we'd time-lapse it here at the beginning so you could see how it kind of came together. I have cut out a lot of the trial and error that was involved with it, but at least we should actually give it a name, thinking about it. We should name the highway and stuff. So there it is. We'll definitely look at these things more in-depth at the beginning of the episode as well, so don't worry. We'll zoom out, take a, a bigger picture look at these things. But this is going to be another road that's going to feed into the town. So I thought about bringing it into that roundabout, but that roundabout is actually right next to the sort of residential estates and I don't really want them getting overly crowded. So I decided to build a sort of just a regular junction here, but to give them sort of slip roads on and off this other main road. So they have the option of going forward and turning right. Remember, we are left hand drive in this save. Or they could just go straight left to merge onto the main road, and here, from the main road's perspective, they can go straight left and go out towards the industrial areas. So that's kind of the idea there. Now this is further down, right at the first roundabout from the initial highway, and you can see some of the fertilities now. Just building a basic main road that's going to kind of travel along past this, and we'll build onto it a little bit later. So. I can appreciate here at the beginning, maybe hopping around a little bit too much, but in just a second we're going to pull back and have a look at it all, and it'll all make much more sense. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Blackwater. Now unfortunately, I've got some rather dire news to start us off with. I know no one likes to be a bummer, and it's actually one of the reasons that this video took so long to come together, and that's because... We're being met with a copious amount of red tape and bureaucracy coming down from above. So much so that we couldn't even finish the outer bypass loop. What we have to do, I'm told, is gather more expansion permits. And that's going to require hitting the next milestone of Tiny Town. 
So I'm sure it won't take too long to get there. We did just hit Grand Village in the previous episode, which has given us copious amounts of new buildings to kind of play around with, including buses, taxis, and higher education in terms of high schools. So that's what we're going to work on until we can actually get some of that specialized industry that I am frothing at the mouth for. We have copious amounts of dense forestry to kind of secure, shall we say, exploit, probably a better word, flanked on two sides by fertile land. And then to the north of that, there's specialized ore industry as well, which you could use for minerals, coal, you name it, it's in the ground. Of course, we can also set up some livestock and then some regular farming or stone mining as well. That doesn't actually require deposits, and I plan to do that all out there. But until then, let's just focus on what we got until we hit that tiny town metric, and then we can basically fill in the gaps, close the transport loop, connect it to the highway perhaps, and set up the industry and give these people jobs. Because unemployment is at 13%, 13.5. Let's call it what it is. Let's not dance around it, it's 13.5. That's unacceptable. That's better, 13.4. <laughs> so we want to give these people jobs by setting up that industry, but also we've got a few other things to zone as well. So the first thing, we have the crematorium here. Oh, you know what I never did, actually, was set up districts. We really got to do that as well. I might do that mid-episode, actually. So we have the crematorium. I thought this area is kind of a perfect little area for setting up a few offices. They don't mind working around here, right? I, I shouldn't think so. So we'll just go with pathways. You know I love my pathways. We'll bring this one right out here and just go around the edges of the building, I guess. Ah, see the zones? They are all messed up, so we'll recorrect that zone there. And this will allow me to even just build the pathway a little bit better. Maybe a bit more aligned. Can we do that? There we go. Alright, so that looks a little bit better to me. And perhaps, I don't know why the zoning is broken here. Oh, I know why, actually. It's because it's latching on from this side. And that's latching on from there. Don't, don't need any of that happening. Let's get rid of both of these. Let's see, did it fix? It pretty much did. So, I would still say that this is, you are totally welcome to come all the way out like that. And now we've got a little block of small office buildings, I reckon. So, low density offices, no problem. And just to correct this side as well, one more time, bring that over there. And now we've got offices all along Heather Street. So, that may take a while for them to actually fill in. I was surprised to see that we had such zoning demand for offices. High skill labor availability is low, and unoccupied buildings now is a new thing, so obviously this is just going to completely fall away. But as we get a few extra people, even just reaching the tier of educated, maybe some might filter into the city that are well educated, these should fill in no problem. We'll have a look when they actually take hold who has the education. Yeah, there we go, actually. Well educated, zero out of one. So we'll see if those positions ever get filled or, or what happens in there. So they're going to be taking in software. Making some financial, love it. Snafu Insurance, that one's called. And this one is Indie Lizard. Software and they make media. A little media company. It's all well and good. So the next thing I think is gonna be transport. So in order to do that, I was thinking of using this area out here. So to get re-familiar with the city just very quickly, of course we have all the row housing up this way. We've got commerce largely in the center. A bit more of the nicer estates out this way. And I guess because it's nighttime now, we've planted all of these trees and they're casting quite long shadows. But when the day brightens up again, it'll look a little bit less cluttered. Although I feel like it looks quite lived in and when the trees actually grow fully, it should look nice and lush, I think, anyways. Another thing I thought worth mentioning is I started to add in the names of channel members into the game. There's actually, it's a good problem to have. There's quite a lot. There's over 350 of you guys now, so really do appreciate it. And I've named a street... Tribune Street because the first tier of my channel memberships are called Tribunes. The second tier is called Senators and the third is Casters. Now the Casters are probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon although a place like this would be good for them somewhere where they have their own big plots right those are the guys with the money <laughs> and girls of course but you guys down on the Tribune Street I mean you're in the game but you're sharing with a few others. So there's actually five or six families per household in this place. And if we hover over, I've given them the appropriate name. So we have the Para family. And then the person here, Supreme Para. So shout out to Supreme Para, who is a Tribune channel member. So I appreciate that. Just appreciate the support. Wanted to put the time investment into actually filling out some of the houses. And one of the cool things with naming a street and then filling the houses and stuff with these people is if we ever see a person out and about, and we see this person here, Sneedler. It'll say that they reside on 226 Tribune Street. So I'll know that they're a Tribune. Now, 
unfortunately, I didn't really know what to do with the spouses, so what I just did was I kept the last name and removed the first name and just instead just used the letter. So it's like, you know, we could say that this is Christine Sneedler. Um, so we'll see, like, if I ever see, like, Tribune Street and I'm like, oh, it's C. Sneedler. I'm like, well, that's not technically the person this is because they don't have the little prefix. So I just thought I'd establish the rules there with that. Anyways, one last thing I thought worth mentioning, we'll talk about this in just a moment, is that I've gone over it with some detailing of the city, just ever so slightly, using some of the developer tools to kind of fill in grass all the way up to the edges of buildings, and actually where it's probably most notable, well, here would actually be a good spot, although it's getting dark now. So we just have no, no gaps, right? No base grass texture. Instead, it's the proper building grass that pushes all its way out to the edges. And I'll show you how to use that if you're unfamiliar later in the episode. But I've also done it for the industry. So you'll notice that you'll have massive gaps of grass in and around industry, but I've now paved it with concrete. And that way we just, oh my God, the smoke. Check out the frame rate on that. <laughs> That's because it's a lot of alphas intersecting with each other, killing your GPU when you do that. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so basically we have nice, barely any seams between where our paving goes and then there's either asphalt or concrete on either side. So it just makes things look a lot more seamless, a lot less silly. I haven't done it absolutely everywhere. You'll see, still see patches now and then, such as here, for instance. So most of the place has been covered and I even made one custom area down here. So along this roundabout, there was a big gap of grass here. So I decided I'm going to put in a little fence, a little parking sign which is unloading now, of course, because I've zoomed in. Dame doesn't like me to do that. Given a little ticket booth thing there with a little, um, whatever you call it, like arm for people to go in. I guess I never closed the fence here, maybe, or that's the way out. I don't know. Either way, I just... What just happened? Okay. Either way... Hey, it's loaded back in, though. Either way, I just thought it was a nice little add-on. little extra, a few little props. Brings the edge of the area to life, I think. So, I thought that was worth mentioning. All right, let's get to the gameplay proper. So... As mentioned, we now have a bus depot, and we also have a taxi depot. So in looking at our transportation metrics, obviously there's not many people in the town, but it'd be nice to set up some basic infrastructure for this. So we can't actually see too much going on right now. I was hoping to see some taxis, because we noticed them before in the previous episode. You'll see the little taxi icons as they're driving around, and even buses from other cities. So we can see taxis have actually catered to 31 citizens per month. Uh, so we want to bring the taxis in-house and make money from them ourselves rather than having other people use them. And I've seen a lot of people say that they have a lot of taxis in their city. And I think that's because there's a lack of other transport options. So they resort to getting taxis. So I'm just going to flatten the terrain out just a little further here to add a few more services in. So I said I was going to look at the layout of the city. Of course, we have our residential over, if we angle like this, sort of northwest, commercial and stuff like that in the center. We have the smaller, lower tier, res or lower density residences out in the west. And then in the north, we have our like schools, some higher density residential things there. Also, of course, now we have some offices that have popped in. And then all the industry on the right. So I'm just going to brighten up the day. Because it's obviously getting a bit dark. There we go. All right. So we still have pockets of areas that we could fill in with industry. But this is the sort of services area, right? So we have our power plant there. We've got the road maintenance depot and the park maintenance depot. And these guys just take a highway. Or sorry, not a highway. <laughs> they just take an alleyway out and they all go out this way. And I'm still hoping that even though we're going to pile on more buildings, we're just going to leave them with that one exit. I think it'll be okay because it is just an alley. It shouldn't really get used by anyone to go, go anywhere other than just to get to their jobs basically here. All right. So with that in mind, we'll do the bus depot right next to the park maintenance depot. We're happy to announce the first bus depot just opened. Wheels will be rolling soon. I'll give that a like. <laughs> nice, all right, and it's on high lane. Cool name. Uh, the next thing then I thought was, so of course, bus depot does what you'd expect, right? 62,000 upkeep, and it can handle 25 vehicles. So I can't remember if it was in City Skylines 1 or not, but I think the vehicles were unlimited. It was more just about where you wanted them to roll out from. But in this game, they are limited, and you have to put down extra garages if you want to get more vehicles. It's borderline not worth it, though. This building takes 62,000 upkeep per month. The garage, which adds 10 vehicles, so less than half the amount that you, you would get by standard. Half would be 12 and a half vehicles, right? 
we're only adding 10. We st we're paying 30,000, which is just slightly less than half. So I think the money starts to not make as much sense when you add on garages, but it does, it is more economical for space, I guess. And it doesn't really add to the employees, I don't think. At least I haven't noticed. So um, there's also that kind of to think about also. But um, I would just rather add another bus depot at some point in the future. Our town is pretty small, and obviously as we're going to grow, I'll try to grow it relatively quick. But, um, well, I think by most people's metrics on YouTube, probably not quick at all. But this is just going to stay small. We're going to instead cram in the taxi depot here next to it and not give any room for the upgrade. And I hope people can handle that, okay? So here we are back in the transportation area. We now opened up the, uh, the ability to add a bus station. This can actually be upgraded with a taxi stop in it and a platform for electric buses as charging stations because you can add that. Enables the depot to send out electric buses. The types of buses operating on a line can be changed on each individual line's bus line panel. I've never actually done that. I think it's to do with, yeah, creating lower noise pollution for the vehicles that roll around, but I've never actually checked if their capacity is any different. Kind of interesting. Anyways, let's go with the taxi depot, which fits in quite nicely here. All right, transportation department, a modern city deserves to have hashtag taxis. We're glad to inform you this city has now taken that step forward. So there we go. There's our two buildings. We have our taxi depot and our bus depot right across from each other. Right along the line, we have the park maintenance depot and the road maintenance depot. So these vehicles are all going to push out this way and get out. Now you can make taxi stands. That's where taxis will wait. And buses will just keep rolling around, just come back here when their shift ends or if they need to get maintained. So we have this gap here that I'd like to do something with, right? A gap between the road and this area here that we could fill in and make it look a little nicer. I thought we'd use this time to show you the example of how we fill in graphically these little areas. Uh, first off, I'm just going to use a path tool to go straight across it. Do we want to keep that there? I'd say so. Why not? And we'll bring this all the way out to here so it's almost joining onto... In fact, we could go across and make a double... No, we don't need to do that. We'll just go to there. All right, we'll bring this one straight down and across all the way to the very edge. Now that's probably gotten rid of that edge there, so I think we will probably have to do that, actually, if you want to make it there. Yeah, that's no problem, though. I don't think it really even counts as two. It just counts as one, as far as I know. Let me just test something really quickly. Could we get rid of one side of it? No, you do just have to have both or none. So that makes me think it does kind of act as one. We'll see. If it causes problems, we'll just get rid of it. Not a big deal. Um, okay, and then we'll just do something similar down here. I don't think this path is really going to actually be used. It's more just an aesthetic thing. Could do that. It's a shame I can't just go to the side and... Well, I suppose we could just get rid of that one, right? That one doesn't need to be there. The weird thing is, I've noticed, is that it keeps a traffic light there. And I, I've noticed that, and I just don't know what that's there for. It's just on its own, and it just stays green. Very weird. I don't think anyone can press a button and cross here, so I'm not really sure why it's there. And if you try to remove it, I can hold right click and it looks like it's going away, but it's not. <laughs> and it just went red and then green, so I'm not sure what that's about. Really not sure. So I might have to look into that and change it maybe, because that doesn't seem right to me. We'll see if cars are stopping there a lot. All right, so now that we have our path in place, what we can do is extend the borders of this. So if you go into the game, Oh, sorry, if you go onto Steam, if you're playing on Steam, and right-click the game in your library and type dash developer mode into the launch options. So you right-click the game, go to properties, and then at the bottom of that window, it'll say launch options. And you just type it in like this, Devel dash developer mode and a capital M. And then just launch the game like that. You'll get access to this screen here, or this panel. Now to use that panel, you just press the home key. And this will add any object to the game. And it's how I added in, for instance, the parking decals, the fences, the no parking sign, the little ticket booth thing, and the entrance arm. Sorry again for the mass unloading and loading. I just cannot seem to figure out how to fix that. All right, so what we'll do now is type clip. You could also type surface. Surface is probably a better word, actually, but we'll just type clip. And now we can latch onto the texture of the building itself and bring it out to the edges so that it looks a little bit better and like this place was built with that in mind. Obviously this little thing doesn't continue over, but that's fine, whatever. Uh, okay, so that just goes, and it snaps really nicely as you can tell, it just goes straight onto the edge of the path. Beautiful, love it. Such a great non-feature, developer mode feature, that I hope they do something with in the future and give us access to it properly. 
because it's basically working as in, I would say almost as intended. Now for this side we could put in grass. So if we just type surface, you get a list of all the surfaces that are there and s grass surface one is the one that's sort of plain grass. Grass surface two sort of has stripes on it as if it's been mowed recently. So we'll just go like that. 90 degree angle. We'll just go all the way along here. No big deal. All the way down. Now I'll try to do this as l little as possible in the video because I want to be progressing and growing the city. The detailing stuff I could do in time lapses maybe or just in between episodes for bits that aren't important. But I just wanted to show it. That's how you do it. And now we've got a cleaner looking edge between our buildings. And of course you can still, this doesn't really affect anything. There's no collision on it. So you can still add trees and different things if you wanted. So what do we have? Birch trees? Don't know actually if they'll fit in there. No, they're too big. But bushes will be added in there, no problem. So you can still decorate it and do things with it if you wanted to. So that's just one little tip on how to make the place look way nicer in my opinion. So we'll just try to balance this out now and I might just go like this again, push it out just a bit further and then we'll just smoothen it or soften it. All right, so yeah, happy enough with that, right? We have an overabundance of electricity, love to see it. So what are we up to now? We're halfway to Grand Village or to uh, Tiny Town. Still a grand village. Now, of course, these aren't going to actually roll any vehicles out yet until we set up bus stops and stuff, so I'll have to figure out where they're going to go. But the next thing that I want to do is set up a high school, right? So currently, we just have an elementary school on the far side of town. I want to build a high school somewhere out here. Now, if we look at the contour lines, it's a pretty steady decline of a hill all the way down to the coast. It's too much of a hill to really change. We'll just have to work with it. But I'm just going to build a sloping hill that goes down. It's not too steep. You know, every line is a meter. So you have to go... How far do you have to go? About 200 meters before you go down 10 meters. So it's not like that bad, but it is a hill. Um, something actually I just noticed is this right here. Let's just change that as well. Three-lane asymmetric road. You know I love it. There we go. So that gets rid of the parking. We can see people using my little path now. And if you remember at the previous episode, when we put down this car park, the texture of this was coming out over the edge. But then in doing that bounding trick, it's now just where it should be. So it looks much better. So really happy about that. And these car parks are basically filled up, like immediately. So we could raise the fee on them, but I kind of want to keep cars off the road. I was tempted to put in maybe another one on this side. Could be worthwhile. Let me know what you think. I do think we'll probably build a pedestrian bridge over this if my plans bear fruit. So let's see, medium roads, we'll go with the just standard medium four lane road. Starting in the center, contour lines are on, 90 degrees, and we'll go, I don't know how far this is gonna have to go, we'll just go down to, until it gets pretty far and then it might have to arc. So what I'd like to do with this is continue a medium road somewhere over so it can latch onto that roundabout. I would say push this in just a little further to about there. This looks like the one, 90 degrees, we'll go to right there. So that's a main road following parallel to the contour lines going straight across. Something else I'm going to do is just get rid of all these trees. They're kind of in the way. All right. Nice big blank green canvas to work with. So it's a bit deceptive, though, from up here. Remember, there is indeed a hill, so we are much lower than we were before. Might have to level this off, level this out a little bit and make the hill a bit steeper. Just a smidge. So this building is quite large, the high school, right? It goes further, far enough back. And we want to push it in a little bit from the edge. I want it to come in about here. I think we should do the landscaping first though, right? Yeah. Because even the road will depress the road a bit. Alright, so that's kind of what I wanted. <laughs> it's a little different than I was initially planning, but I think it's good enough. Alright, so with that, I think now we can have something like one, two, three, four across. And we could do little shops and things in the center. So I'm just going to drag this out temporarily so we can see where this should go. So our high school. Place it in right here. I guess 300,000, 500 XP. And I'll start to create some educated, I think. We already have 30% educated. High school, I would imagine, gives you educated, right? I'm a bit confused about that. And then the college, well-educated, and the university, highly educated. That's what my understanding would be there. So we already have 30%, but that might just be the random people that arrive already have, haven't been in high school, I guess. But no one has well-educated or highly, which I think we'll only see rise when we get college or university. I guess we could test it out, but once we... Because we won't have a college for a while, so we'll just see if we ever get more of this number. But I don't think so. We'll see. Alright, there. So I've just made the hill a bit more steep 
from the back. So it's total. It's pretty much flat all the way at the back, and then it just has this more steep incline up to the main road. So I'm happy enough with that. So uh, something I thought we could unlock that would work well next to a high school would be parks and you know sports parks specifically, tennis courts, those kind of things. So two development points for that, and now we have access in here to this category: sports, sport, sports, <laughs> sports parks. We've now got tennis courts, outdoor gym, skate park, basketball courts. So, first off, actually, what I think we'll go with is... Let me see if I can correct the zoning on this just really quickly. So the zoning is now all coming in from that right side, which is actually pretty good. Get rid of that now. Does it fix it? Uh, kind of. So we'll do a parking area, a medium parking lot. Oh my god, it fits perfect. Nice. All right, and it has a little bit of a hill at the edge, but I'm okay with that. I think that's fine. It's acceptable. It's an acceptable level. Right, so next up then would be actually some of these courts. So the tennis court can go straight here, and we'll do three of them. Yikes. All right, so what we'll have to do to fix that is maybe just rebuild this road with less of a hill in mind. All right, there we go. That's a little bit better, right? So now we have this road staying pretty much flat, and then it just kind of rises here right at the end. So I just have to extend the leveling tool just further out this way and rebuild the road to make that happen. All right, so that's three tennis courts. For some reason, this one in the end has a different type of texture. I know it's petty, but I'm going to rebuild it until it's the same. It has to be the same, or they all have to be different. All right, there we go. We got it. <laughs> it's the same. Okay, so I was thinking now we want to add in some of the other courts. Because you don't just all have the same. The other ones that look good to me would be the basketball courts. They're quite small, though. Um, so I was thinking of angling them sideways. Not sure about the skate park or anything like that just yet. So we'll go with the alleyway that just cuts in from here down this way, straight across. And it seems like it... No, it doesn't really go downhill. So Fairview Lane. And then we'll just add in the basketball courts. Hmm. We've got some funky terrain going on here. So I might have to just kind of fix this up for a sec. Alright, so after a lot of trial and error, I got something I'm pretty happy with anyway. So we have a sort of little pedestrian walkway here that goes down from the sort of higher main road that comes down this way. And that just kind of, I think it looks kind of nice at the back of the basketball courts. It has done some warping to a little bit of the fencing. I've tried to avoid that as much as possible. I spent a very long time flattening and changing the terrain, but when things get that close to each other, there's only so much precision you can kind of do with the vanilla tools. So. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it's the same with here. It's just like a little bit creeping in on the edge. I mean, maybe I'm being picky or maybe I'm not. I don't know. But from at least from this height, things look pretty good. And it's uh, fairly functional. I kind of like the idea of the way that people can kind of come down this way. I don't know if this road is actually going to go anywhere or exist. I kind of thought one or two low-rent housing kind of areas here at the back might be kind of nice. But haven't fully decided yet. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the parks that I wanted to use. We do have the skate park and the outdoor gym. Very small buildings. I mean, maybe you could get these in somewhere around the back as well. Very small indeed. Like, we're talking two by two, outdoor gym. I feel like it could have... Well, I suppose you could just do four and, like, make it look, like, bigger as well. So maybe something like that would be cool. And initially, I thought that here was going to be sort of commerce or commercial area. And uh, we're going to continue with the road layout anyway, so... I want to bring this down here, 90 degrees, snap, and bring this one straight up. I'll just bring this across. Yeah, okay, the zoning looks good, so I think it's worked. 
and then just bring that one in here. Cool. All right. So there we go, high school. Now we've got a couple of additional buildings here. The school library, with its ex extended selection of textbooks, provides students with better chances of graduating. There's already 66 people in here. 85,000, I reckon give it to them. We're actually about to hit our next milestone. 100 XP. Should we also give them the extension wing? So that's gonna go from 800 to 1200. The average time to graduation is 10 months. We're currently in August of 2023. So 10 days, day-night cycles that go by in-game. We'll see that take effect there is also the sports field it's a big american football field not going to add it to our quaint little town just yet but perhaps in the future something like that would be more appropriate for now i think we could just use parks this gives you 40 outdoor recreation 15,000 upkeep per month 25 attractiveness do the extension wing we're going to use it eventually i'm sure it's only 400 extra students 130,000 though another 100 xp we're close now all right pretty happy with that uh so we just unlocked buses, so we could pop down an EU bus shelter. Let's say, well, first off, actually, let's make this road one way. All right, so you come in this way, and then you loop around. So it's just for dropping off uh, students, I guess. Maybe that's a bad idea, I don't know. I like my one-way streets, but I feel like maybe I'm not the best at using them. We'll see. EU bus stop shelter. So right near the entrance, maybe about there, it gives people some space. And then we'll do another one, the taxi shelter as well. So you can have the shelter or just a regular stand. Uh, this one adds more comfort per person. It's also more expensive, but I think it's fine. So another one just about there kind of mirrors the... How many bushes is that? One, two, three, four. F it's on the fifth bush. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Nice and symmetrical. All right. And then maybe here down the center, turn back on our snapping. Give it a double pathway that leads across. Hopefully that doesn't really create any problems. Should be okay. And uh, yeah, then I reckon we could just start zoning it for some commerce. I don't think we need any more paths going across that area specifically. So I'll just press I to get rid of that. Just to about there, we'll leave a gap on either side. So a little shop should pop in now. Actually, thinking about it, did they do it correctly? Not quite. Um, I want them to face this street, not face inside. So the only way to make them do that... Again, just going to keep deleting that one. There we go. We got it. Okay, cool. A little trial and error, but at least it's now correct. A poor, a poor commercial demand is all gone, though. After all that. Uh, our zoning looks a little off, though, as well, is it? I don't really know how that would have happened. But whatever. Um, okay, so I think just one last thing here. We'll just fill that in with some grass on the sides. Alright, cool. Things are loading back in now. Alright, I'm, I'm quite liking this little area right now. So, yeah, the kids have their high school. They can go across to the shops if they want. It's quite a nice looking area. They have extra parking for people who are maybe dropping off kids. I mean, there's parking built into the building, but I very rarely see anyone use that. Maybe in an update they'll figure that stuff out. But this is also for the shops, I guess, as well. And maybe if people are just going to the tennis courts and basketball courts. Of course, we can't set districts on these or anything to say that it's just this place that's using it. Um, how, how much XP are we away now? Just 30 XP, really close. All right, so the other thing I want to do is link this road into that roundabout and finish that off. Uh, we want it to curve, so I guess probably just go a bit further straight, actually. That's 180, that doesn't look 180. But it is. Wow. Okay. Perspective, man. It's a funny thing. And then we can maybe get onto the center here about there. That's 180. And then just curve. It's quite a dramatic curve. And it seems like it's going to go one side or the other. This is the, the side we were on already. Hey, there we, do. there we go. Milestone 5 unlocked. Extra permits. We'll use them in just a sec. Start working on that industry. So I guess we'll go there, right? Not the biggest fan of that. Let me just correct this. This has got to be a nicer way to do that. There we go. It's kind of the same, but it's a little bit better. A bit more of a gradual curve. Only slightly. It's still fairly fairly tight, I would say. But um, I turned off zoning cell length and we were able to snap to the center. And that didn't mess with my little decorated area. Um, okay. Okay. So we've set up our first taxi. Yeah, yeah, we should see some taxis rolling out. There we go, our taxi little stand. Now it's interesting, they've cut in this entire area here. It makes me wonder if that should just be further down, if they're gonna use the, could they get backed up on the whole road? 
Because that might be the case. Maybe we should use like the end bush or something. Could I do that maybe? Let's grab this and just say move. I just want to see does it change the road at all. Now it stays curved in the whole way. So I'll tell you what, we'll use that end bush then. For this one though, this makes sense to be, it doesn't make sense for them to be symmetrical thinking about it. This should be further up and that way buses will stall up behind it. That makes a bit more sense I think. Yeah, so they both have room to kind of get to what they want. Uh, yeah, all right, cool. That's fine by me. Uh, what next? Well, we've hit our next milestone. Let's have a look at actually what we got, because I didn't really pay attention there. So, tiny town, increased loan limit. We now have North American and EU mixed housing. So, we can have commercial on the bottom and residential on top. Vegetable farming, coal mining, communications tower, or a communication development tree. So, we now have post offices and a telecom radio mast. And we can then put mailboxes around to keep people happy as well. Nice. It's going to be really good stuff. What else do we have? The districts. Speed bumps. Yeah, so we'll have to make some districts. The other thing as well that's interesting is if you click the city information panel and go to city policies, we also have the taxi minimum fare. I'm going to whack that up. I don't really want ta people using taxis. We'd rather them use buses. So the minimum fare is $20 or £20. So, fairly expensive. Man, these things take a long time to come in. Alright, so we want to build out a little bit of extra residential. So, we can get rid of that now. And one other thing I want to do is curve this up and around and merge it on. So, give these guys another way out, effectively. Alright, so we're going to bring this out to about 100. What have we got? 104. 90 degree angle. Okay, nice compact zoning. Love to see it. So from here, that's 56 distance, 180. Actually, what we need to do is work out mathematically what it is from here. So that's 108 there. Curve that up to 54, right? The halfway mark. And then bring this up, which ideally would be 54, which it is. And then bring that along to 54. All right, that gives us a nice, as nice a curve as you can get with something like this. Well, I was thinking as well, that should be one way. Again, don't know if I'm <laughs> doing horrible things by making that one way, but maybe, maybe not. And then we want to prevent them turning right. So you just, you just emerge. You're just merging on. Now, to continue that merge, we're also going to go with the five-lane asymmetric road, and we can upgrade this one, upgrade there. So they've just been given their own lane rather seamlessly, I might add. Yeah, pretty good. And then we can get rid of maybe crosswalks here because we're going to be putting in our own we're going to give them a, a pedestrian over overpass so that's all right obviously this thing shifts a bit i don't know if i could maybe change that but i feel like it has knock-on effects to everything else you want to shift so again turning off our zoning and doing a bit of an upgrade we can shift this over to something like there all right and then we have a very seamless line indeed let's try that but i think i think it will just keep having knock-on effects no Nope, that's totally fine. All right, it didn't mess with that road too much, actually. So there we go. Nice and smooth. Pretty good. This must have wide parking, whereas this one I don't think does, but it doesn't need it, actually. All right, nice. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So that's sort of like a way that you can come down, you can come in. If you're dropping people off from school, you just go in, you turn, you drop people off, you come back out. Or if you're a taxi, a bus, whatever, this is a way for you to kind of get back out and get somewhere else quicker. Hopefully, a little messy. But, you know, we're supposed to be kind of designing a UK town here, so it's supposed to be chaotic and messy. Where's the logic? Nobody knows. All right, next thing then. We want to actually fill this place in and get some people growing, and then we can start to work on industry. How's our um, unemployment now? It's getting worse, 16%. So let's uh, speed up a bit. So I was thinking of coming in, again, somewhere in the center here, but overlapping. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to do instead row housing down this way. So there's no zoning on this part. I'm just going to give them a path, get rid of that, and see if that has made any difference. All right, yeah, nice zoning. So a pathway going in between these two areas would be pretty good. And then we'll do row housing here again. I suppose there's no harm in doing that to create a little cross-section. All right, now we can actually zone it. So this is all going to be row housing. Speaking of, people had noted that I left one gap, which is so annoying. But there, we got a, that one in as well. Uh, in, yeah, let time play. That should I'm sure it'll fill up in the estates. And then over here, we'll do more regular houses, so a bit more spacious homes.
Alright, so I've got a bit of a crazy layout going on. Not gonna lie, it's a little, little whack. But, when I remove some of the pathways, I'm hoping the zoning comes in correctly and looks a little bit better. I wanted to create a small little mini suburb here. Then we're gonna have some higher density housing here. We've got the row housing down here. And a little bit of commerce just on the edge. In fact, we can get rid of those little bits there as well. Um, and just see how that kind of looks. If it doesn't look quite right, maybe I'll redo this and rethink it. Because it is a bit strange. Not gonna... Not going to beat around the bush. Uh, but we can let time play, see how these different buildings come in. See what things are looking like right now. At least it's going to meet some of the low density demand. Uh, we want to meet some of that higher demand though. I don't think we're really quite ready for... I mean, low rent housing maybe actually might not be a bad idea. We could do mixed housing even just right here. As a bit of a main street sort of shop. So, should we do that? Give that a, give that a go. See if anyone decides to move in. It is mixed housing. We've demand for high density. Don't know if it counts as high density or medium. I think it's medium. And we don't have any demand for that. So that's not filling in right now. Fair enough. What we could try is one low rent housing just in at the back of the high school. Well, that's come in as two anyway, but fair enough. Two low rent housing. Actually, maybe could we just try it again? Would have been nice to get one. There we go. One big building. And uh, alongside that, it's just some maybe medium density housing. So that's kind of what we have up in the other area by the elementary school. So... Hmm. Yeah, we could do a 4x4 four four here, and maybe a 4x4 four four here, and see if people move into that eventually. Obviously, the demands aren't really going to be there for a while for that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how we get on. I'm going to let it grow and then decide to get rid of it. Oh, I can see people using my little my one-way merge back out kind of street. Pretty happy with how that's coming along, and obviously, oh my god, there's so many houses, but a lot of them are coming in really small for some reason. I think they get given bigger gardens and stuff when they do that, so we'll just see how they look. If I'm not happy, you know what's going to happen. They're going to get the axe. Um, yeah, mixed. I'm just wondering, will mixed look decent here? I feel like it might be a bit too extreme, which if that's the case, just a regular shop or something might be a bit better. And uh, We also have room for offices, so even a little bit of an office around this area might be kind of good. On the corner. I feel like on the corner, a little admin building near the school and stuff. Accountant's office, those kinds of types of things could be common. But we'll leave it. We need to get over to our specialized industry and give these people some jobs, some real jobs. Not just working on emails all day, am I right? <laughs> some jobs where you're working with your hands, damn it. So what do we got? 16.8% unemployment. Right, so we have this area out here. We have our specialized industry now. So I haven't really been paying attention to Chirper, by the way. So you can let me know if I've missed something massive down there. Uh, but we've got now vegetable farming, which does require fertility. We have forestry, of course. Coal mining is something new for us as well. We can feed our own coal power plant rather than having to import things. So on the production side of the screen, we have the materials, what we're importing into the city. That's costing us money when we import. Um, so I'm not sure where we see that. I think in the budget panel, we can see service trade. No, service upkeeps. So there we go. Maintenance and resources is half a million per month for us. So it's obviously really expensive. It's the bulk of our... I mean, it is all of our money, basically. But it also is maintenance. So it's including all... The, I wish they would really separate this because it's all the upkeep for all your buildings plus the resources you bring in. But there's no breakdown of the cost of the resources. Maybe it just doesn't matter. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, some people have also brought up the fact that apparently, like, some of this stuff just doesn't really matter. They import these things anyway. It's not really coming from your own buildings. I'm guessing in the future it will be. You know, these things will probably be ironed out or improved or fixed or start to work as described if they're not working that way already. But I am still going to follow along as if it is working because it's just the best information I have, basically. So we have a deficit for wood, for instance. Now, unfortunately, when I hover off this, it goes away. But I'm going to be telling you to look at this part of the screen here, okay? So if you look over on that side, we can see where wood goes, right? We get it from forestry and importing, right? We're, we're just getting it from importing. Forestry is grayed out because it's not being used. And then on the right side of the screen, we can see heating, processing in industry, and export. So export's actually green, which means we... I don't know why that's green, because it should only light up when we're actually using it. But maybe some of it just comes through our town and goes right out. We did see some trucks doing that, actually, so that could be the case. But what's important here is the processing tab. On the right of the word processing, and we have the icon for zoning industry, on the right of it, we have an icon for timber. And the reason this is important is because in our taxation section in, in industry, that same icon is here. This is timber. So ideally, you want to set your... Well, it's up to you, really, how you do things. But I think that we kind of want to incentivize... If we're going to be making certain goods locally, 
which we are, we want to incentivize the industries to pop up that use our own goods. In theory, this would also cut down on traffic, but the most, the, the majority, well, kind of, I guess. It actually depends where you're, how you lay things out. But it keeps it internal, right? It stops it coming in from the highway. Although you could have it come in from trains as well. Anyways, you go off at a million tangents in this game. The interesting thing is you don't have to import anymore, right? You just, you're serving it locally. So you take out the import costs. And if anything, you'll have a surplus and be exporting, which is great. So if we have a look at some of these other buildings, we can see here, livestock, for instance. On the right side of the screen, we have three types of industry that use it. And unfortunately, it doesn't tell me the name. And if I try to hover over it, it goes away. But we can kind of match it to stuff in the budget panel in a second. So we can see some sort of, I think it's like a food tray. So that's like convenience food, I think. Fast food, maybe. And then textiles, something like that. So if you go down to industrial again, we can then kind of match those icons. So there it is. Convenience food, regular food, and textiles. Awesome. Now, from those things, you'll start to feed into the commercial area. So convenience food, food. But some of them get refined again into recreation, entertainment, these other things, beverages, that type of stuff. So again, we, we're going to mess with the rates here. And when we zone new industry, hopefully we'll encourage certain companies to appear. Sorry, that was a bit of a, a tangent, but hopefully it all kind of makes sense. There's our um, high tier building, by the way. 100 households potential. Nobody's moved in, though. It might end up going abandoned if we don't get any room for him. And uh, these people are going to need some jobs. So let's get started with that. It's 8.50 a.m. Let's turn on the day-night visuals. We've got a fire breaking out over at the row housing. Oh my god, there's been a car crash. Just saw someone get off the ground. A, a bike was slammed into one of the houses. And Oscar Martin is not happy about it. I was just checking to see if he lives on Trivian Street, but no. Police are here. Oh my days, look at this. Can't even cross the road, really. Well, they can, I guess. <laughs> What a nightmare. This street is out of commission. This is one of the ones that leads off from a roundabout, so I can see how it happened. Look at this guy just pulling in and just realize what's happening here. And he's like, nope, can't go that way. That's really cool that they do that, to be fair. He came in and he's like, well, <laughs> don't think so. Not today. And off he goes. Or she. All right. Over to the industry. So um, this is going to be quite the project. We've got fertile land right here. So we want to obviously tap grain and maybe... Maybe vegetables, hit a bit of both. Although we could actually look at what we need the most. That'd be a way to look at this. So vegetables, we got a de deficit of 28 tons. Grain, 31. So ideally both, they're pretty close. And then livestock as well. So we've already got this road coming down here. To make things simple, we'll just build off of that to start off with. So if we can we keep that tab on actually? Fertility, yeah. So wanna be careful we don't go too far over. So I'm thinking we just use alleyways this whole way. I don't really think it matters. And the other th thing that would be important then would be, let's just have a look at our radius. Try to make them look clean. We'll go straight out with an alleyway, just pretty far for now. 90 degree angle, all the way. Lovely zoning. Love it when you just see zoning without any gaps, it's so good. All right. That one's actually given itself a building in the middle of nowhere, but a little chicken coop. All right, so that's going to be Meaty Bits 22 Washington Lane. Yeah, we got loads, loads of territory to work with here. Uh, speaking of territory, we should just expand the map just ever so slightly. We'll come across this way now. So we can make more use of the fertile land out this way. Yeah, so we're coming over it a bit. You know, I, I don't really mind. It's fine. I'd rather just the farms look a little bit nicer. The efficiency of a little bit of fertile terrain, I don't think matters that much. I suppose going fairly central will give us a good look at things. Yeah, I've got another idea. All right, we'll come in from somewhere down here instead. All right, about there. And from here, we'll just do the same thing, right? We'll paint to the very edges of the building. Thinking about it, this road could probably move over, actually, for this farm. Because it does come out quite a bit. Although, it would just probably look better if we keep it this way. <laughs> Always end up saying that, so... It's like, oh, you could move it to be more efficient. It's, always, it's an internal struggle in my head always. Efficiency versus aesthetics. But it is what it is. All right, there we go. So that's going to be vegetables. So we've actually got room for maybe some even industry buildings here that could pop up. Or just, I don't know, something in the future to make use of that space. Parking, other little things that could possibly go there. 
But that's actually a decent amount of jobs. That's 17 there, 14 here, 16, and just one for now. But they grow. Once they start expanding and stuff, they'll, they'll fit a bit more in. Uh, it also kind of depends on the efficiency. So I think maybe we could wrap this road around and actually have it feed back out. So it's two ways in. Alright, that was a little bit finicky, that one, but now we've got livestock here, livestock here, grain and grain, and then vegetables. So we can actually see some trucks are coming in now, delivering, I think they deliver in oil and stuff first. Although actually it's carrying nothing. I've seen this happen as well, this could be what people were talking about, which is trucks and stuff will just come in. They'll actually drive into these little buildings. There we go, which looks pretty cool. They do their thing and then they reverse and come back out. And I was like, oh, maybe they're going to load up, but no, they're still empty. So it's almost like, yeah, they've been told to come in from off the map. Primeval Petrol is who owns this. They're supposed to deliver oil and other things to make factories work, but they just come in with nothing, drop off nothing, and then leave. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. I'm sure it'll work one day when the game comes out of alpha. And what do we got? We got some people coming in now to, uh, to go to work and stuff. Sweet. Uh, it would be nice to maybe get a little creative and just bring this alley all the way up and just merge it in. Could we do that? About there. And if we said that you cannot turn... No, that's fine. Yeah. I almost want to make alleys one way, but you can't. They have to be two way. Because I was going to say, it's just a way for these guys to just get straight in on the left. But it has to be a way out for them. So I don't think there's anything you can do about that. If you're, if you're sticking to an alley. Could upgrade it so it's like a one way. Just even this bit. Um, so it's like okay no matter what. You're like one way to go in. And then it is what it is. But then it just becomes an alley. Looks a little weird. I don't know. Maybe we could just update that or something. Let me know what you think. Uh, but yep. Let's just go. Just keep the ball rolling as I keep saying. Just get rid of some of these crosswalks and things. Traffic lights there. Not needed. You should absolutely not do that. That's a police officer doing that. I can't believe it, but I don't want anyone turning right here. So, no more. There's no white line on it, so I'm surprised he did that. He's going to check out something at the farm. It's quite cool. I love actually seeing actually the machines and stuff. And we've got some people here who are working now. Police are coming in to pay a little visit. Make sure everything's spick and span. Oh, actually, you know what? I didn't actually check the terrain differences, but... I don't know why that's appeared there like that, that greenhouse. It kind of did it on its own, I think. Some of these like little buildings that have popped up are raising the land. Because for me, it's just otherwise, you know, a very gentle slope. Oh yeah, first chance she gets parking on a little area like that. Terrible. Terrible to see people doing these things. I don't know where you can park other than that, but we could give you a little parking area in this place just so that if you want to stop off, you can then get to work easily enough. There we go. Even doing that, I think, just looks better. I just didn't want it connecting to over there, so a little bit better. Anyway, yeah, there they go. So you have a car park now. We'll make that free. Whatever. It's just if you want to park for work, you can totally do that. Wow, they've leveled up already. Look at this. Nice. So, yeah, let's incentivize these guys somewhat. I should have really done this beforehand. I thought I'd kind of do it behind the scenes, but let's go industry. So we know that basically livestock that can come way down. 8%, I think, is a good number to hit for all these people. Textiles, that's 8 as well. Beverages, pharmaceuticals, all this other stuff. That's all fine for now. Wood, we know we're going to bring it down. So we'll bring that to 8%. Yeah, so here we are. So vegetables, 8. Timber, 8. And so on and so forth, right? Green. Paper, you'd assume, comes from wood, right? But I think it's a double refinement. So you can encourage it somewhat. Same with furniture, right? Maybe not all the way. Food, bring that down. 
All right. Now, commerce-wise, I guess it's kind of the same. We won't go as far low with them. Lodging. Hmm. Meals as well, 12. Recreation, entertainment, and textiles. All right. 12%. Let's just see how that treats us. Obviously, we're burning money left, right, and center. But that's because, if I recall correctly, we have very low taxes right now. We're trying to keep people fairly wealthy, level them up, keep them happy. All good. Okay, so next up, we want to do a sort of quarry and also uh, logging. So this looks like a really flat sort of basin area that could be good for a quarry. Uh, just a regular stone quarry. So it doesn't actually require any of the fertility, right? So we can just build it there. Uh, no questions asked. Trying to think where the lo uh, logging could go. So maybe actually we'll just start... I don't mind having to build these multiple times. But there's forestry. So something like that. That radius there is pretty good for this area, I would say. All right, that took a little while, but now we have, like, much nicer looking terrain, I feel like. And I'll, in between episodes, just start to paint extra trees here. Uh, something I think is probably quite important to get, actually, because we're doing this, is fire watch towers. Um, now, I need some points for other things. I would really like... Maybe we could still do it. The firefighting helicopter depot. Because if fires happen in the forests, it can take a really long time to recover. In fact, I don't think it ever recovers. You just have to plant new trees, and that takes forever to grow. So, at least having um, Firewatch Towers reduces the risk, but then helicopter fighters are the only ones that can actually get there. What you could do as well, though, is just build a fire station and then upgrade it with a helipad. I don't know which one's more economical. We need the Firewatch Tower anyway, and then it's going to be two points either way. So it's like, well, which do we use? This is more bespoke, I suppose, just for this. Maybe we should just go with the fire station and then give it the helipad and hope that they go out. More firefighting helicopters that can be used by fire and rescue service to quickly respond to emergencies. It seems like that's quite a big thing for the town size we're at now, but so is this. The fire station is actually quite large. I'm gonna, uh, You know what? We're going to risk it, go without it just for a little bit, but I want you to tell me what you think would be the better option. Because I, I really wish... Sometimes I wish I was like live streaming just so I could ask people and just have the choice made for me. Because I get... um. Not anxiety, but I guess I get frozen up. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know which one to pick. <laughs> Not sure. Whereas you guys will probably have the knowledge to say like, yeah, this one's probably good or, or whatever. My gut is telling me to go with the firefighter helicopter depot and just put it somewhere far, far out of the city so it doesn't look too weird. That's what my gut's telling me to do. Um, all right. So we've got one logging industry in. I think... Um, Maybe I'll time-lapse doing some of the other ones, because this is such a massive area. That could take such a long time. But I want to get working on stone, right? So I know that we've got this sort of semi-flat basin area here to work with. I think if we just continue an alley somewhere up here. But that's actually totally fine, because the stone quarry, if it builds one of those big drill things, which I'm hoping it does, because they look cool, it will slowly... Oh, there we go. It'll slowly circle around the land, and... Oh, you can actually see it now. It does this straight away. That's actually not as cool. I thought it does it over time, but it'll spin around and like start digging. And then you'll notice like, yeah, there's a depression in the land. I do think it gets stronger than that, that I've seen in future. Um, there you go. That's pretty good. This one typically, typically has a lot of workers when it gets up to speed. And I reckon we could put another one in just around here as well. And we could, to be honest, we could put another one in here and here. I want a big industrial area for this. All right. So, um, yeah, let's check our production tab now just to see things have been running for a little while. So we've got a surplus of wood, surplus of grain, surplus of livestock. Um, no. Oh, we do have the tiniest surplus of vegetables. We're almost one to one with it. So that's nice. We're just feeding all the buildings we have. Looks like we've got a massive surplus of stone. We're producing 242 and our surplus is 220. So that's really good. <laughs> I guess we don't need another stone mine anytime soon. We did build a really big one. What do we, we've got nearly 100 employees. So with all of these new industries and employees, how are we doing now? Pop, I mean, unemployment's still 16%. Goddamn. All right, we're just going to have to put down a few extra a few extra actual industry buildings. Now, I'd like to put industry buildings out here, but if you remember, industry is going to be blowing over the town, and that's why my industry is placed over here for the moment. Uh, ideally, it would go even further out that way in the future, right? Keep it away from the city itself in a way and have nice connections out there for people to commute to and get to them easily now we don't have any demand for offices anymore we still have commercial demand how did these houses come in by the way by now 
Yeah, they're looking actually probably pretty good. This one's cool. It's like a corner building. Nice. I didn't know the game does that. That's pretty cool. I wonder if that was like touching another corner. Could they actually like do a full Parisian style like linked building all the way around? That'd be kind of interesting. I've been making gaps on them on purpose to kind of make them look like more bespoke standalone buildings. Who lives in here, by the way? The Carter family. Denver Carter. He works at Sneaky Ridge. Just over there. Okay. Oh, yeah. We never actually set up the buses or anything. Gotta still do that. Oh, my God. There's a fire. Speaking of fire brigades and things. In fact, I didn't put down the watchtower. So, let's put down a watchtower right now. They can't go into the zoned area. That's interesting. Maybe one right in the center here would be good then. So that's a nice big fire watch right there. Maybe another one will go over here. Even for now, I'm just going to put one up on the tail end of this particular road. They don't actually need to be on roads, right? They can go out in the any area they want. But you do have to supply them with electricity. So we'll get some cables, we'll run them underground, and just feed up to that one. They don't need water. So there we go. So that's going to hopefully minimize the fire risk. So, a tower that keeps a constant lookout, reducing the chance of forest fires, and alerting firefighters if a fire does break out. It doesn't need a road connection, but it requires electricity to function. Negative 80% fire, forest fire response time within a kilometer. So, as long as you're within one kilometer, helicopters are going to get there real quick. Some of the shops are leveling up. Oh, we've got a gas station here. It's kind of an interesting one. A little convenience store gas station. Gas stations often pop up on corners, which is kind of cool. What do we have here then? 60 some they make food or sell food i should say something in all they sell food sell food and they sell vehicles that's a bit of a weird one outside of a school <laughs> petrochemicals well that's fine considering <laughs> we'll never know if anyone uses these things because there's no animations for it i guess people walk up and walk near them and then that's it are you using it mm. jerry chambers he's in there oh they actually, they actually do go inside don't tell me you're just walking yeah there we go yeah he's loving it as you can see, he is playing tennis. <laughs> and he's wealthy. Makes sense. Have we had a, hey, we've had some people using my pedestrian bridge, which is nice to see. Oh, they're walking two dogs. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, and there's some people just outside, actually. That's nice. At the basketball courts. Cool. Yeah, that's a great success, I would say, this little area. Happy with that. All right, um, let's do a couple of buses. So it might take me a minute to figure this out. We can see all the taxis rolling around now. So 114 citizens are taking taxis per month. We want people to get in the habit of using buses. So we have our bus stop just here. That's already a bus stop shelter. So we have a commercial zone over here. So yeah, I'll tell you what. It's Man, this is a crazy filter. But yeah, somewhere here. This will get rid of our grass, but we'd have a little bus stop on the edge of the road just before the junction. That's fine with that. We don't need another one there, but one at the end would be good. All right, this might take me a minute, but I'm gonna start working out the line and then I'll see where I'm missing stops and I can add some in. So with the bus line tool, we'll just start even just here. Connect there to there to here. And then this one can go into industry. So now I have to figure out like, how's it gonna loop around? So maybe it could come in and drop, pick people up on this side of things. But unfortunately, you have to change tool, right? You have to go and change it to one of these. Now, that's a three-lane asymmetrical road, but it still carves in a little indentation for us to add a bus stop. So it'd be right outside some people's houses. But for row housing, I feel like that's fairly accurate. I see that fairly frequently. It takes away their parking, though, but they have a car park right across, so they should be fine. All right, so yeah, unfortunately, that killed this. But that's all right. We'll just go around again. Right, so that's one closed loop. Now, I'm just going to quickly say no vehicles, just or two, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Can we turn that off the line, actually? You dis disable it. Yeah, I'm just going to deactivate the line. We'll let them roll out in a moment uh, when I figure a few things out. So we need a sort of alternating route that does a similar thing, but maybe hits a few slightly different spots. All right, so I think I've got a route in mind. So if we start somewhere like here, and then we come down... That goes into the school, up to this spot, to here, here, there. Oh, not there, sorry, and here. That closes the loop. So we have one 
stuff at the moment that isn't being used. Just gonna get rid of it. I might maybe restructure this a little bit, you know, like it's obviously quite long route, but our town is really small right now. So I feel like as we grow and as we build out down here, and then when we start to think about going across the river and going up, obviously the routes are gonna change because then we'll be like, okay, well, we need a route specifically to get people to school or we need a route specifically to take people to industry and so on. This one's just kind of a catch all. It's doing a bit of everything. We'll see if it gets busy that way or not. Um, I haven't given the place any district names either yet. So until we do that, I feel like I'm not even gonna, I don't know what to call the lines, but we'll just leave them as is. So we'll activate both of them. Just gonna go down to like maybe three vehicles on each. Is it three by standard? It is. Ticket price is eight. Yeah, so the ticket price is much cheaper than a taxi, so that's good. And they run day and night, which is totally fine. So if we let time play, we should see our buses start to roll out now. Um, they're just, I'm just going to leave them blue. Blue is totally fine. In fact, we could maybe um, give it a bit of weathering, as I often say. So just make it a bit more grayish, grayish blue. It does color the line, but it makes the buses look a little bit better, I feel like. Unfortunately, you can't copy and paste the color, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. And actually, thinking about it, I guess to know, seeing as we've only got two lines, to know which one's doing which, we'll color one slightly more green. So the kind of turquoisey color, they're going to be like the alternate route. All right, so six buses are now going to be rolling out. And we'll let the, we'll give them a little bit of time to do their thing, get some people and go around. But in the meantime, we're going to build a pedestrian bridge that leads somewhere across to the school. Uh, so maybe just even starting something like here. All right, there we have it. So yeah, I, I'm not super sold on that. I might have a look at some actual real life pedestrian bridges and try to build something that looks a little nicer. Using a We've got lots of space on either side. This road isn't gonna get like super busy or anything on either side. So having some like, you can do the windy thing where it goes up and across. That could look a bit nicer, but it's all right. I mean, it's functional <laughs> and it saves people having to use crosswalks, I guess. All right, so just to check on some things here at the end really quickly, we can have a look. Our population is at 3,700. Money is still falling by 6,000 right now. But again, we are sort of, we have very low taxes, so I'm not too worried about it. We haven't had to take any loans or anything like that, so I feel like things are still pretty much fine. Uh, we've set up all of this industry, which looks ridiculous in some ways, but good in other ways. Um, I might do some work behind the scenes now to kind of fill in this area and make it look a bit nicer. I'm going to also just build out a road and I'll time lapse it so we see it in the next episode. We'll just make tons of logging industry out here so that we can kind of hopefully lower down that unemployment, which just keeps climbing. I mean, we did expand a lot, to be fair, with a lot of higher density buildings, but no more expansion for a while until we get these people jobs. All right. So hopefully some of that will sort the unemployment issues. So that's already got employees even before the building's done. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know it did that. So, I mean, that's not going to even make a dent. Barely brought down from 18 to 17.7. .7. So yep, that's going to have to be it for this episode. I'm going to go through things and like kind of add some extra trees, get rid of some of the pathways, things like that, and just uh, look forward to reading the comments and seeing what people think. So basically, this episode is all a big expansion for industry, doing our road infrastructure for the future, adding a school, taxis, buses, and starting to think about how people are going to fit into these different areas and try to make the school look somewhat decent. All right, that's got to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.